Hello, my name is Mike Ranieri, and this is the second of a three-part series on OData and CSDL. This part will cover how Redfish uses particular aspects of CSDL when defining its models. Within the Redfish schema files, you'll see a common set of OData annotations that are used. From the core OData definitions, Redfish uses description to provide informative documentation, long description to provide normative documentation, permissions to document if a client is able to read or write a property, additional properties if an implementation is allowed to add more properties, auto expand references which tells a client that a navigation property contains the reference URI, and auto expand which tells if a service will expand entities even if not requested by the client. From the measures OData definitions, Redfish uses unit to document the units for a given value such as for speed, size, voltage, or other analog values. Redfish follows the unified code for units of measure standard for describing the units of measurement. From the capabilities OData definitions, Redfish uses insert restrictions to document if a client is allowed to add a resource to a collection using post, update restrictions to document if a client is allowed to modify a resource using patch or put, and delete restrictions to document if a client is allowed to remove a resource from a collection using delete. Redfish provides a common set of definitions in two of its own schema files. The file Redfish Extensions defines Redfish specific annotations. This is the file Redfish Extensions. Uh, the first namespace you'll see in here is Redfish Extensions. V one zero zero, and in this namespace are various terms that are defined and used across the uh, the Redfish schema files. For example, allowable values is used by a service to inform a client what values are allowed to be passed for a given parameter. The term required is used to express which properties in a schema are mandatory for a service to implement, and the term required on create is used to express which properties are mandatory for a client to use in a post request when creating a new instance of a resource. At the bottom of the file, you'll find the namespace validation.v100. And in here, there are different terms that are applied to properties to enforce some level of conformance. For example, the term pattern is used to uh, express uh, the different regular expressions that a property must conform to. The terms minimum and maximum, they express the uh, different integer ranges that a property is allowed to use. The file resource defines the common base class for all resources which can either be resource or resource collection. It also defines the common properties found on all resources, as well as common type definitions. You'll find the properties ID, name, description, and OEM defined here, the definitions of the links, status, and location objects, and some common sets of enumerated lists. This is the resource schema file. The first namespace you'll see here is the unversioned resource namespace. In here, you'll see some of our early type definitions, such as ID, description, and name, which are common to all of our, uh, all of our Redfish entities. We also have our links complex type defined here, which is used by resources to express different related items. We also have our common definition for our OEM object, which is primarily an empty object that different implementers can expand upon as they see fit to implement extensions to the Redfish model. We also have our abstract base classes for referenceable member, resource, and resource collection. These are used in the next namespace below. Within resource.v100, we have our more formal entity type definitions. Referenceable member, which is used by um, entities embedded within other entities, simply contains a 
member ID property, which is also its key property. We have our common resource uh, entity, which has its base type of resource.resource, .resource, where it leverages the, the type definitions for ID, description, and name. This also specifies that the key property within all resources is the ID property. And then we also have our resource collection entity type with a base type of resource.resource .resource collection. Here, it also has the description and name properties, but name is the, the key property in this case. Moving back up, within the unversioned resource namespace, we have our status complex type, which contains our properties state, health rollup, and health. We also added an OEM uh, complex type here, so that if a, a vendor wants to extend upon the status object, they're allowed to. A lot of resources uh, within the re uh, Redfish model will leverage this uh, complex type definition. We also have our common enum type list for the, uh, the state within the status object, where we have different members defined, such as enabled, disabled, standby offline, and several others. We also have some other enum types that the status object leverages. Uh, we have our health enum list, which has three, three values, OK, warning, and critical. We've also added a common reset type enum list that, um, that various resources that have a reset action will leverage, where we specify um, the reset types can be on, force off, graceful shutdown, graceful restart, force restart, NMI, force on, and push power button. Within the resource.v110 namespace, we have our identifier complex type which is used by various resources that have some sort of unique name associated with them, such as a worldwide name on a fiber channel controller. Within this complex type, we have a, a durable name property, that's a, uh, a free-flowing string, and then a durable name format, which specifies what the uh, durable name string conforms to. We also have our location complex type, which has two properties defined here, info and info format. Info is the actual data associated with, with the location, and info, info format describes how that data is presented. Later in the resource.v130 namespace, we've extended upon the, the location definition. Location uh, uses the base type of resource.v110.location and it adds upon that the properties postal address and placement. Postal address will contain um, pieces of data like a street address, a country, um, anything that's kind of uniquely identifiable for a, a location. Placements will describe more details about where it physically sits in a row or a rack and possibly within an enclosure. A redfish resource is a singular entity, such as the thermal resource. As stated earlier, all resources inherit from resource.v100.resource, where ID is used as the key property. Name is mandatory, but description is optional. Many resources define a links property that inherit from the resources definition of links. This is the links complex type found in the resource namespace. Links is an object that only contains navigation properties, and the links are references to related resources. A generic OEM object is made available for implementations to extend upon the schema as needed.
This is the simple storage schema file. The first namespace you'll see here is the simple storage namespace. In here we define the entity simple storage that inherits from resource.v100.resource. This definition is an abstract definition that contains no properties. This is done as a matter of convenience for versioning, which I'll talk about in a few slides. In here you only see a few annotation terms that, des that describe what a client is able to do with it at a high level. In this case, um, there, a client is not allowed to insert a new resource, it's not allowed to update this resource, and it's not allowed to delete the resource. In the simple storage.v100 namespace, we define our first version for simple storage, which inherits from the unversioned simple storage.simple .simple storage definition. And here we'll define different properties, such as UEFI device path, devices, which is a complex, uh, an array of complex types that are also defined in this file, and a status property that inherits from resource.status. The device complex type contains a, a handful of properties. We use a common OEM property so that uh, an implementation may extend upon the device definition. We have a name property. Uh, we also have a status for this particular device, a manufacturer property, and a model property. A Redfish resource collection contains a set of resources of the same type, such as the chassis collection containing the different chassis resources. All resource collections inherit from resource.v100.resource collection, where name is used as the key property. Description is optional. All resource collections define a member's property as an array of resources of the type of collection that they are describing. This is the simple storage collection schema file. In here, you'll see a single namespace called simple storage collection, and it defines a single entity, simple storage collection, which inherits from resource.v100.resource collection. We also have a set of annotation terms that describe the different uh, capabilities that a client is allowed to do on this resource. And there's also a single navigation property defined called members. And it's of type collection of simple storage dot simple storage. Since it was expected for the Redfish data model to grow over time, it was important to establish a versioning scheme so that clients and developers can identify when new properties are added to an existing resource. All resources use a specific naming convention with their namespaces to show this. The first namespace in a resource is unversioned and contains no properties. Subsequent namespaces are versioned and inherit from each other. Namespaces are named as follows. The unversioned namespaces take the format of resource name, whereas the version namespaces take the format of resource name dot v x underscore y underscore z, where x, y, and z are the major, minor, and errata versions respectively. Adding a property will generate a new namespace with a new minor version. Correcting an existing file will generate a new namespace with a new errata version. This is the manager schema file. And from the heading comments, it's already at version 1.3.0. Within the first namespace, we have our unversion definition. We have a namespace simply called manager with an entity also called manager. And there are no de uh, property definitions within this entity de definition. Beneath that namespace, we have our first version namespace, which is manager.v100. And the entity manager here inherits from manager.manager. .manager. And this is where we have our first set of properties defined uniquely for manager, such as manager type, links, ethernet interfaces, serial interfaces, and so on. Later in the file, 
we have our first errata namespace, manager.v101. And this inherits from the previous definition, manager.v100.manager. And we have two other errata namespaces, v102 and v103, all of which inherit from each other. From the description of each of these namespaces, there are no new properties added, but it looks like that there were some clarifications made to some of the annotation terms in the original namespace. With our first ver uh, minor version namespace, we have manager.v110, which inherits from manager.v102. Now, the reason this does not inherit from manager.v103 is that manager.v103 did not exist when manager.v110 was established. So we have to go back and just go to the latest errata version when we're adding a new minor version. Similarly, we also have a, an errata namespace added for uh, manager.v111, which inherits from the 110 namespace. Since Redfish supports both CSDL and JSON schema formats, it's important to maintain equivalent functionality in both spaces. The CSDL schema files are used to generate the JSON schema files via scripts. There will be a different number of files associated with each of the file types. CSDL schema files are just one file per resource, such as manager.xml, and JSON schema files will have one file per version per resource type, such as manager.json, manager.v100.json, manager.v101.json, and so on. Both sets of schema files are intended to be functionally equivalent. That's all for the Redfish CSDL usage. For more information, you can reference the Redfish Standards page, the Redfish Developers Hub, or get involved and join the SPMF. Thank you for watching.